Boxing King Media in association with Box Row. Sam Jones wearing a wrestling T-shirt. That's a new one. I, I didn't know you're a big wrestling fan, Sam. No, it's, it's not just any wrestling T-shirt, mate. It's a head of the table T-shirt. Roman Reigns, mate. Roman. I am. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I used to be a big fan of wrestling when I was um when I was younger. But like, I'm still. I still kind of follow it, and I still kind of follow it as best as best I uh I can. It's busy. <laughs> I'm a busy guy. So like. I try and watch it whenever I can. I want to be the next... Uh, I, I want to run in WWE. I want to be the next Paul Heyman. That's what I want to be. You know, that I, I, funny, it's funny you should say that. I can kind of picture you doing that because you can talk. I can, <laughs> I can imagine you being like that British type version of Paul Heyman. Like an annoying, annoying heel manager type thing. Yes, I don't want to use the uh, word annoying, but I, I, can, I can imagine you being like a heel. I can imagine people like... Yeah, let's... Um, so yeah, Paul Heyman, if you're watching... I want to be the next you. <laughs> Just don't get your head kicked, him. I hope you can look after yourself. Exactly, mate. Exactly. Wicked. Let's get on to the boxing, man. So I saw your interview the other day, so I just picked a couple of different topics to talk about. Dalton Smith, first one coming up, uh, big show next week. Uh, a massive statement from Sky buying, you know, the the purse bids for for that fight. Uh, and I'm I'm assuming it must have been a big one because obviously they beat Matchroom to it. Do, do you think, you know, I saw an interview. Uh, Ben Shalom did yesterday as well. He didn't go too deep, deep, but it sounds like that was a statement from them to show Dalton Smith like we're coming for you because it's his last fight in his contract. Yeah, um, I don't know. Listen, we're in a competitive market at the moment. We've got a lot of promotional outlets, a lot of promotional companies, and there's there is a lot of talent, but like there's 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 just lots to there's a lot of there's so many different platforms at the moment, and look, it's competitive and. Boxer have won the purse bids. I wouldn't look too deep into that, but listen, you gotta you gotta take your right off to Shalom, and he's he's obviously been aggressive in trying to get that fight. And good, honestly, good luck, good luck to them. It's good. It's good. good. Yeah. It's, listen, it's good for the it's good for the fight. It's a good time to be a fighter, a fighter because there's um the the more promotional companies out there, the higher the bids are going to be, aren't they? So it's a good time to be a fighter. Because Casey Benjamin obviously is a Hennessy fighter, so both yeah, yeah. In the main event have got no connection to a boxer, mm -hmm. so you naturally assume he's, the fight's been bought out for the hope of potentially getting a winner. Long yeah, time. yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, I'm sure. Uh, I think Dalton's a massive favorite. No disrespect to Casey, but Dalton's a massive favorite in that. I'd be staggered if he didn't win that. I think he's going to win and look really good. And then they're obviously throwing their names in the hat to say, "Listen, we want to sign you," which is fair enough. We're fair enough. They're being. Listen, aggressive kind of tactic but fair play and it kind of leads me on to the, the three guys that are kind of earmarked as I can imagine some big fights down the line Dalton Smith Pat McCormack Adam Azim imagine them <laughs> fights in a couple of years time listen they're, they're, they're three tremendous tremendous uh, tremendous fighters the obvious one if, if, if Dalton did sign the sky would be the Azim Dalton Smith fight but like I don't see the rush with with Adam Azim. I don't see this big rush. I know Shane McGuigan like really highly rates him. I really highly rate him. I think he's like got. If if you're looking at like the 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 British market at the moment, yeah, you have to put him in that category of special talent. Yeah, there's no there's no from what I've seen of him anyway. We've not really seen him get uh get hit. It'd be good. To, like I don't want to see. Like I'm not saying I want to see him get get tested, but I would like to see Ryland Charlton if that um. Because of Rylan Charting's style, I think Azim will look really good. Like I, I would like to see Rylan's a nice guy, um, but I can see Azim doing a real job on him because of the style. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it, so I don't know whether we can use it as a measuring stick, but we'll see. If Rylan Charton lands, lands, then we'll we'll see what what his chin's like because Rylan's Rylan can punch. Everybody knows that on the on the circuit that Rylan can punch. But I really like Azim. I think he's a special talent. I think. Just go easy with him. Do you know what I mean? Like, go easy with him. You don't need to throw him into no big, ridiculous fights right now. Just keep building him nice, and then you've got a, you've got they've got something really special on their hands there. Definitely. Uh, and moving moving on to the promoters, Oscar De La Hoya, Eddie Hearn shaking hands this week, and I'm sure over the last twelve months I've seen X amount of 
posts and videos from Oscar slating Eddie. Yeah. From a fan's point of view, what happens there? Because you've probably been in back and forth with promoters, and then when you guys meet, meet you're shaking hands and everything's like, like it never happened. No, the tequila must be good out there because all I ever see yeah, is expensive. Oscar De La Hoya. Eh? A bit expensive in Dubai. Yeah, exactly. Very, very expensive. But no, all I ever see is Oscar like slag Eddie off on, on, on social. If I was Eddie and Oscar De La, listen, Oscar De La Hoya would punch Eddie's nut in. But it's, it's like, if he was slagging me off the whole time, listen, I wouldn't go, go up there and like square up to him because he'd knock me into space. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go up and start shaking hands with him on camera. Like, listen, people should always put personal relationships aside when, when it's to do with business and you want to make a fight. But like you're personally attacking me, I'm not gonna go out my way to go and shake hands with you on like I don't know. It, it, listen, the picture obviously did good numbers, so it, it's it's obviously a good good bit of PR. But and hopefully they can make some good fights to, together because I told like what I've always said, right? If promoters work together you will get better shows, you'll get better fights. If not, you get diluted shit. That's the, This is the problem with boxing right now. So if they work together, like you look at Eddie and Frank Warren, they've been just basically, unless it's a purse bid, they're not interested in working with each other, which affects boxing, yeah? You can think someone's a dickhead, like he can think he's a dickhead or he thinks he's... But work together, and then you put on a great show. Like Zach Parker... um against John Ryder. Okay, well, no, it won't probably appeal to, like, I don't know, casual fans that don't, that, that don't like, uh, uh, obsessively watch boxing. But everybody knows in the trade, that is a, that is an, um, that is an amazing fight. I can't wait to watch that fight. And I hope it does really well, like, with ticket sales and stuff, because it's a really, really great competitive fight. I can't wait to watch it. But look, when, when they work together, look what kind of, look what you can, look what you can achieve. Why, why do you think Eddie allowed um, Ryder to go go on to BT and fight him and not? Um, I don't know. Like maybe like to to keep the working relationship with BT, but also he obviously fan that he, he obviously believes that he fancies the job. Ryder fancies the job, and Ryder has to be a favorite in that fight due to the fact of who he's beat and who he's been in with his recent run of form. Um, Zach Parker hasn't really been in with anybody. Like his biggest wins. Is um is Marcus Morrison that that would that's what I would say his biggest win is and you he's looked he's looked the part Zach Park he looks as though he can punch he looks like he's got all the potential to be something really quite special but you don't know yet until you put him in this type of fight with and fair play to Parker because he looks as though he will fight anybody he wanted to fight Andrade nobody wants to fight Andrade because he's just got a style you just don't want to fight he was ready and willing to take him on so you can only take your hat off to someone like Zach and uh, I'm really looking forward to watch that fight definitely and big big fight weekend this Saturday in uh, Abu Dhabi um, and just on the back end of this show that the zone have put on obviously I spoke to Eddie last week and I suggested you know they missed out on three big pay-per-views which would have been a massive inroad into the UK market uh, two potential AJ fights Eubank Ben it's obviously costing millions do you reckon this type of card this Saturday will attract UK subscribers or do you think it's more of a show that will probably just keep the US fans happy? I don't, to be honest with you, mate, I don't really know the answer to that. But like I say, will it appeal to the casuals? P probably not. But in the trade, it's an unbelievable card. Nobody can knock that card from top to bottom. Great fights. Um the, the fight I'm most looking forward to, I don't want to discredit the main event because the main event's a great fight, but I'm looking forward to see Chantel Cameron uh, against Jessica McCaskill. I think that's going to be an unbelievable fight. Chantel deserves her opportunity. She deserves this moment. And if she wins, which is like what I expected to do, and and the Serrano fight can't happen, I would like to see Chantel Cameron against Katie Taylor. I've been asking, I've been saying that fight. Chantel, undisputed against undisputed, you can't get any bigger than that. It's just it's a it's a mega it's an absolute mega fight that is, uh, and Chantel I know being the person she is will go to Crow Park no problem and fight Katie Taylor and I actually think it will be a better fight than the Serrano fight that fight was one of the best fights you can see but I think Chantel's style is just as aggressive just as crash bang wallop as Serrano's style and I think you'll get a a great fight but I know she has to do the job this weekend it's a tough task with McCaskill but I just think she's just that much better in every department Chantel so hopefully. She gets her big her big moments afterwards because she's done boxing the hard way. Got loads of respect for Chantel. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Uh, and with regards to the main event, uh, do you give Zodo a chance against Bibble? Yeah, 
yeah, of course, you, you can't not give him a chance. He's like 44 and 0, like, like he's a top fighter. But I just think Bivol's, again, just that bit better in every different department. I think he's, um, his confidence will be at an all time high. He's just beaten the, uh, the pound for pound, num- well, the, at the time, the pound for pound number one, the biggest attraction in boxing. So his confidence will be at an all time high. So I would make Bivol the favourite in that fight. But I wouldn't be shocked either way, but I would make Bivol a, a clear, clean favourite in that fight. And just moving on, next week, Probellum uh, back in action first. Just a quick one as well, just a quick one as well before I forget. Shout out to Zelfa Barrett. I really, really hope he does the job on, on Saturday. Really tough ass, but I really hope, I wish him all the best. So shout out Zelfa Barrett. Definitely. And it's great to see Kalia Fire back as well, because I think it's nearly three Absolutely. years. Absolutely. It's been, been a long, long time for, for Kyle. I, I don't know whether he's had some problems outside the ring, but good luck to Kyle, Kyle Fire in the, in the ring. Great to see him back. He looks in a good place. He's got a big beard, so I'm assuming he's, he's gone to... Yeah, big beard, ready to go, isn't he? Big beard. That's it. Um, and then Probellum, first big show, I'd, I'd say we'll be right in saying first big show since the big drama, uh, you know, about probably nearly a year ago now. So first big show back on the road next Saturday. Yeah, big Friday. show. Big, it's, it's, a, it's a great show. It's a great show next week. Again, from top, from top to bottom, it's it's it's... It's a stacked show. You've got the Brazilian gold medalist Herbert Concisau, brilliant talent. You've got Marcel uh, Braithwaite against Thomas Asamba for the British title. Really great competitive fights, 50-50 fight. Jack Bateson against Shabazz Masu, which everybody's talking about. That could have headlined a, a show in itself. It's, it's, that, it's that good of a fight. And then you've got um, Edwards against Alvarado, which is an unbelievable fight. I mean, people, because of Sonny's talent, people assume that it's an easy fight. It's not. It's a hard fight. It really is. It's a tough, tough fight for, for Sonny. But with Sonny being who I believe is the number one in the division, I, I expect him to look really, really good and come out of it, um, pass the test with flying colours. I think he'll do a great job and uh, hopefully he gets a super fight after after this fight. How realistic is that, though? Because he was so close to getting the Martinez fight and, and it's quite evident now that Martinez pulled out uh, you, there's, never, there's never really been any explanation from obviously from Matchroom or Martinez as to why the Bordino. No, exactly. That's what I mean. Sonny did everything he was asked, asked of him. He was going to go to Ed, go to Mexico to, to to fight him. He was he was prepared to do everything asked of him. And then he, uh, he Martinez pulled out at the final hour. The questions have all got to be aimed at him because Sonny's game to fight any of them. You've seen what Sonny's like. He'll move up and he'll fight Bam. But I think Bam's coming down in weight, isn't he? So that's obviously the fight that I believe Sonny will. I don't want to speak on his behalf, but that's the fight that he's been talking about wanting. So let's hope that fight can get done afterwards. Because again, it's another great fight for the division. Um, no one can accuse Sonny of not wanting to fight people. He would literally fight anybody. So um, credit to Sonny's, Sonny's a credit. Definitely. And, and then moving on, you know, last week's hottest topic, it probably still is going to be till it, till it irons out. Conor Ben situation. Uh, I read, you know, he, he kind of confirmed in an interview with one of the papers that the fine that he was uh, told to pay by the boxing board, £50,000. 50, what on earth would you have to do to pay, to have to pay a £50,000 fine? Well, what's the fine for? Nobody knows, but that's what I'm asking you from your experience in boxing. You must be doing something really serious to have, have to be fined 50 grand. That's a lot of money, that. Like um, Cash Ali was fined about 10 grand for the bite against David Price. And I'm, I'm, I know that. So 50 Gs is a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Um, But I don't know the facts, mate. All I know is, right, and, and, and I spoke about it in my last interview. I don't like to sound like, like I'm repeating myself all the time, but... The whole situation has been a mess from start to finish, right? It, that was, no, it's not finished yet, but it's been a it's been a complete disaster from from all from all parties. Now, all roads lead to the fact that Conor Ben has cheated. Yeah, it, that that that's what it's that's what it it looks like. Like I know I keep using an example, but like he looks as guilty as OJ Simpson at the moment. He does. But what I will say is, and the research that I've done, yeah. I'm not saying I'm the flipping brains of Britain, but the research I've done is even though it's prohibited by farmers, farmers do use that. Um, I forget the name all the time. Clo- clomiphene. Clomiphene, yeah. Clomiphene. Farmers do use it for their chickens. Now, for it to get into somebody's system, he would have to consume a lot of chicken and a lot of eggs. Yeah. And as far as I'm aware, Connor is a pescatarian. So, 
he doesn't eat chicken. Eggs, I don't know whether that's like you can eat, but and, and he says he eats eggs. So he'd have to eat a lot. I don't know what the number was. I know there was a number like, oh, you'd have to eat 30 eggs a day. I don't know the number, so I don't want to comment on something I don't know about. But what I do know is, is farmers do use it. They have, and they have used it, they, they, and they have used it. Um, I know they still do it in abroad, but I know in this country, I think it's prohibited, but they still use it. You know, just on top um, of that, Sam, just as you're talk, saying that, because I was going to ask you this anyway, because I like you obviously been reading about what, mainly Twitter. Yeah. Somebody put up an article from the GQ magazine, which is not too long ago, where Connor obviously talks in detail about his, his diet, and there's there's no suggestion of, of eggs. He talks from breakfast to dinner. What, what do you eat? There's no mention. I've of read the same thing. I've read the same thing, which makes it, like, this is what I, I, I just said before. Um, I believe... He has cheated, yeah? But I'm also open-minded enough if he presents something to be open-minded enough to say, Connor, I apologise for ever calling you a cheat. Like, I would literally ring him and say, Connor, I apologise for saying for saying that because people are very quick to say, oh, he's cheating, he's cheating. And because all the evidence does add up to the fact that he's cheated. But you do have to think, right? And I'll use it, I'm using Eddie in this circumstance. Eddie Hearn, yeah, has took a, a bashing, yeah? Some of it rightfully so, yeah, in this. Some of it rightfully so, because I think he could have handled it better. But he was under obviously under a lot of pressure. His mates involved. Eddie Hearn could leave Conor Ben under the, as a horror you name, as you say, under the bus. Yeah, he could just say, fuck Conor Ben. He's he, he, like, my, my reputation and my business is bigger than Conor Ben. So I could say, fuck Conor Ben. I don't believe him. He's cheated. And then people will go, oh, Eddie Hearn, what a guy. Like, he's making an example of drug cheats. Eddie Hearn obviously believes Connor because the easiest thing to do would be leave him in 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 the dirt. Do you know what I mean? And and Frank Smith, who's got ties to the Eubank family, which everybody knows, he could say, "We're not interested in Connor Ben," but they're they're sticking by him. And again, I mentioned this the other day. I believe Tony Sims. I tr I, I look at Tony Sims and I think he's an honourable man and I trust him. So I don't believe he knows one single thing about what's gone on here. Um, if Connor has is to have come out that, that that he's cheated, I don't believe he does. So what if Connor Ben has cheated, which it looks like he has, it's something what you bankers put on his Instagram, which is perfectly right. What you do in the dark always comes out in the light. And I think it's just between him and a supplier, whoever's a doctor. I don't want to well, drag that doctor. Well, you, you brought the doctor up. This Again, this is something else I saw on Twitter. Somebody yeah. screenshotted his, uh, an Instagram post from him from July the 8th, uh, where he says he's working with Conor Ben. But I think people have said, I think Eddie said it in an interview where they didn't work together till August, but he's got posts on, on Instagram saying on July the 8th that he was. This, this is what I mean as well. Like, I'm moving on to that, that subject. When people say, I don't, what I don't like hearing is the levels, this levels thing. Oh, there's level, there's, there's only small amounts of levels found in his system. Listen, there's things called, if you research it, again, I'm not brains of Britain, but I do research before I start opening and spouting my mouth off, microdosing, yeah? So it's easily easily flushed out. Now, what it looks like, yeah, from an outside, outside perspective is, is that he, he, he's on a cycle, it's nearly, and, and he's been busted, but Listen, I'm so like I'm not bored of talking about because I want I want him to be innocent. I want to be able to message Connor Ben and say, Connor, I am so sorry for for calling you um, or believing you was a cheat because I'm open minded and everybody should be open minded. You can make have your opinion, but like what I do, what is people do have to re realize is the fact that he is a young man. He's got a young son. He's got a young young wife. He's got a young family and and his life right now is up in flames. People don't mind about that because they think, ah, oh, he's a cheating bastard and he deserves it. And, and partly, partly true. Yeah, he does deserve a bashing if it's nailed on that he's cheated. As it stands right now, he's cheated. It's in his system and he's cheated until he proves otherwise. So all I would say to people is, is keep an open mind and if he does eventually prove it, well, everyone's going to end up with like egg on their face again for bashing him for cheating. But people can only, people can only We've, we've all got eyes and ears, you know what I mean? And we're all like, like we're, and we've all got our entitled to opinion. As it stands, looks as guilty as OJ Simpson. But what I would say is, is just keep an open mind because he's spending a lot of money on, on uh, from what I'm hearing, is on lawyers and stuff. And 
whether it's just a smoke screen to kind of say, oh, to kind of, because nobody ever in the in the beginning comes out and says, oh, I've cheated. Like Jerome Miller, Jerome Miller's like, I don't know how this has happened. And then a few days later, it's just like, I'm so sorry, I fucked up. Like, like so who knows how this is going to play out? All I know is, is that I think there's a lot more to 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 come out. But if he's he, cheated, he deserves a long ban. He deserves a long, same, long ban. Are you under the same impression as Dan Raphael? Because he was quoted as saying, you know, the trace amount uh, story in his words is, is a diversion. I don't like. Uh, I don't want. I don't care about trace amounts. Do you know how many how, how many levels is good to find in your system? Zero. Zero. I don't want to see it here any. And like what I keep saying, Google micro do, micro dosing. Okay. It, it's like, like what I said to you before. All roads lead to the fact that he's cheated. But be open minded in life. If Conor Ben can prove his innocence, which let's face it, looks very unlikely, but if he does, then everybody owes him an apology. But until then, unfortunately, it's guilty until, until proven innocent. Thank you, Sam. And then just last topic I want to speak to you about. It came out yesterday, Josh Taylor, Catrell. It's on Feb 4th, not officially announced, but the rumour is that it's going to be pay-per-view. What do you make, what do you make of that pay-per-view? Um, yeah, I've heard, I mean, from what I'm hearing, it's not nailed on where the venue is. I know I know it came out to say, oh, it's in Scotland. That's not what I've heard. So let's see. I mean, Jack deserves his rematch. It's a big domestic fight. Um it, it, it's going to capture the imagination of the country. I've got no problem with it being pay per view. If I'm honest, I've got no problem with it being being pay per view. It's it's a domestic uh, domestic rivalry. There's a lot of needle involved. They don't like each other. It's going to be a tremendous build up. If it's a good undercard, um, if it's a solid undercard, I've got no problem with it with it with it being on with with it being on pay per view. I read some somebody say something yesterday that it might have missed the boat for the hype. Uh, if they if they if it happened within six months, it could have been paper. No, I don't, no, I don't, I don't. I think you'll pick it back up. I think after the first press conference, and people realise how much they hate each other because it's not a joke. Trust me, I'm telling you, they don't like each other. Um, I think people will get behind the fight. I will. I'll buy the fight. I, I'm looking forward to watch it. Likewise. Uh, Sam, as always, it's been a pleasure. Uh, anything else you want to add uh, before we let you wander off into the? No, day? mate. Just tune in next week to to the the big show in Sheffield. Are you coming to the show? I will. I'll be there. I'll be there all week. Uh, what what is I'll, it? Um, you quickly tell us what what the layout is. You know what's happening. Public workouts, etc. Do you know? Yeah, it'll be at Meadow Hall, mate. The press conference and the public workout will be at Meadow Hall, so everybody's all the public are welcome, and uh, I look forward to seeing you there, mate. I'm sure we'll catch up next week and do an in person one because I know people probably are sick of seeing my. Uh, I look probably less fat in person as well, which is always good. Uh, you said it. You said it, Sam. I appreciate your time, man. Top man, mate. See you later.